Hey everyone, uh, I just want to start off by saying that this review is one that I was really considering like, about. Uh, as I mentioned before, I really enjoy strategy games, but sometimes you just come across a game that leaves you polarized. This is one of those games. Anyway, thank you for checking out the video. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for the newest content. For today's TACT review, where we look at a game's tactics, AI, and cheese, we're looking at a little game called Galaxy Squad. Developed by a team of one with a low budget, Galaxy Squad was released in 2019 on Steam to what appears to be a rough start. These days, the game sits on a mostly positive rating marketed as a turn-based tactical roguelike. You'll be in charge of a team of mercenaries flying across the galaxy on a wild adventure of your choosing. And this actually isn't a misnomer. As you go through the story, you'll be presented with A or B choices that greatly affect subsequent story missions and plot. And by greatly affect, I seriously mean greatly affect. Literally, each choice provides a completely different route, giving a much stronger narrative compared to other games in the genre. Missions are also impacted, but they boil down to just either eliminating the enemy or destroying a certain uh, objective. I will comment though, that at times the story does get a bit wanky with events, with just things happening with very little build up. Also, occasionally the dialogue was a bit foreign with its English, but I'm not really one to judge, especially if English isn't your first language. I'm not big on the graphics and art style personally. It has a low budget feel, but I admit it does grow on you over time. I can't really say the same for the audio though. While the tracks fit in a 1980s sort of way, loops would occasionally reset, causing a full stop of the BGM, which was very jarring for me. And some of the sound effects were just really too loud, with the audio levels being all over the place. Performance-wise, there were some longer than desired load times, and some video clipping with the cutscenes, but nothing that stuck out with the gameplay. In all, it was built fairly solidly. So, we got a lot to unpack here, let's see how this works for the players. Alright, when looking at the tactics, if you were to take the space navigation system from FTL and add XCOM's 4X battle system, you get Galaxy Squad. After selecting a new game and game type, you're giving three soldiers, of which you can do minimal customization of their appearance, but most importantly, their class selection. At first, you only have access to three classes, the Frontline Damage Soaking Assault class, the Long Range Attacking Shooting class, and finally, the Backline Medic Support class. Once you've configured your party for the run, you'll have the chance to select a ship, starting bonus, and difficulty setting. Ships offer different bonuses and support during your run, similar to your starting country in XCOM. At the start, you can only choose from the Battleship, an attack support ship, the Crafting Ship, that allows you to make items to support your soldiers, finally, the Explorer Ship, which allows for a bonus fuel and more speed. Starting bonuses are straightforward with the choice of free levels, money, fuel, or equipment. All have their merits, but I personally felt that the early levels tend to be most effective. At the start, you have access to a good amount of quests for cash, which in turn allow you to buy all weapons, armor, and mods you need. Furthermore, item crates tend to be very plentiful early on, allowing you more access to items which can be sold for more money. On a side note, other ships and classes can be made available using glory points from runs. These can be purchased in the unlock menu, but we'll touch on that later. The roguelike aspect of FTL is extremely evident in after the opening cutscene. You're basically dropped off on the space map and told that yellow colored markers indicate story missions necessary for completion of the run. As time progresses, a police force indicated by a red marker will be chasing you. Should this hit you, you'll be engaged in an extremely hard battle against them, resulting in your loss. Depending on what you choose at the start, you have a team of three, your ship, and your starting resources. Now the game has three main resources, money, fuel, and energy. Naturally, money is used to purchase items at space stations you can fly to. Fuel is used to move your ship from node to node 
Energy is used for the ship's systems and constructions. As you travel from node to node, you'll be given a situation of sorts that must be resolved. These could be finding some items, getting ship damage, or in many cases, a battle. The notable exceptions are space stations and story missions. Story missions are plain cutscenes or battles that occasionally offer choices that branch out. Space stations are small town hubs that provide shops, quests, and new unit recruitment. Just to note, the unit recruitment is randomized, so you won't be able to make or save scum a particular class. Finally, the ship itself works a lot like the base building aspect of XCOM, where you build sections that provide bonuses to your team. Each ship has unique modules that you can build that offer various bonuses, such as a crafting station or weapons that could be used during 4x battles. Uh, this also allows you to customize your experience during each run. However, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out how to get the battleship's weapons to work. There was no indication anywhere, and I even upgraded both of the weapon systems to to its maximum potential, and I checked every menu possible, which highlights a, port, a, a very important point I need to mention now. This game is not newcomer friendly. Most of what I covered is seldom mentioned, with only an occasional text box that comes up on your first run. As these systems are integral for a successful run, it's important to start early in developing your ship systems and your units. The game gives no indication of how to do or use any of these systems. In regards to the 4X battles, it plays nearly identical to XCOM, with units on the map having two action points per round for movement, attacks, and skills. You'll need to manage and reload ammo for your weapons when low. Units also have an energy bar for skill use, with skills that are contingent on the class. In all, the entire system is XCOM, even down to an the percent accuracy given for actions. And just like XCOM, the percentages given are soft recommendations, as I've missed 100% accuracy shots. Unit classes are straightforward, with each having their own skill sets as well as a general skill that enhances overall stats. Units can pick up things called traits, which do things. Honestly, I'm not sure, as there's no way for me to confirm what any of it means. Sometimes a message just says, unit gained a trait, and that's it. Weapons, armor, and mods can be equipped on all units that provide additional skills, buffs, or effects when in battle. There are no item level limitations. However, there are preferred unit classes for weapons, where certain weapon types get accuracy or damage bonuses. Weapons can also cause status effects, such as freezing or slowing. However, again, there are no indications on what this actually does to an enemy unit. Therefore, the ideal approach is to match weapons with the preferred unit type to maximize the accuracy check and deal the most damage. In all, this game is designed by and for lovers of XCOM. If you are experienced with these systems already, or a fan of XCOM's battle system, you'll have no troubles with figuring out the battles quickly. For newcomers, the bar is set really high on this one, especially with the lack of tutorials or even a help menu. I couldn't in good conscience recommend this for beginners. In all my runs, I went for normal difficulty and usually lost around the fifth or sixth story mission. Uh, each story mission increases the recommended level by one and unit experience feels a bit hard to gain after level four. So if you rush into the story missions, you'll find yourself outgunned after the fourth or fifth mission. In terms of the AI's actions during a turn, it truly feels missed. One important aspect of many 4X strategy games that is even if the fog of war is up and you can't see the enemy, the computer still uses a turn. Now, remember playing XCOM for the first time and you can only hear and see the AI move its units in the black background, the fog of war. You don't know where they are, you don't know who they are. It adds a sense of dread and uneasiness because the AI is getting ready for you. In Galaxy Squad, as long as the AI's units are not on the screen, nothing happens. It's only after you discover the unit does the AI truly start their turn. Furthermore, the AI didn't seem to use much of environmental cover or skills. It was just focused on bull rushing my units, 
and hitting me with hard hitting attacks. The difficulty then seems based on the AI giving more units uh, and more armor to absorb the damage and just stronger attacks to use. By the way, I never had any armor reduce my damage as the AI had. Personally, it doesn't provide a real challenge. The computer doesn't keep up or adjust its style based on your tactics at all. So for veterans, I can imagine this would be boring. For newcomers, perhaps it may actually be a good thing as it gives you time to set up beforehand. However, on smaller maps, it could be really overwhelming, especially when it's 12 versus five. All right, so let's talk about the cheese. I did multiple attempts and avoid buying anything from the unlock menu. With this approach in mind, I found the best approach for cheesing comes down to hiring a full roster to play the numbers game. Getting the radar system to slow the down the galaxy please threat and then hitting every space station for cash. I also discovered you can glitch destruction missions for extra unlock points. Basically, at the end of those missions, you'll need to destroy an object on the field. When doing so, it explodes, dealing high damage to everything one space around it. So I moved all my units next to the object, destroyed it, and got eliminated as well. Then I got both the win and game over screens on top of each other. After hitting yes to return to the main menu, I still have my continue option open. Chose that and bam, back to the run with no trouble and some extra unlock points. Then after a while, I wanted to see what would happen if I bought some of the unlockable content. So I picked up the railgun first. According to the tooltip, buying list would enable the railgun to be randomly found or purchased in my playthrough. Went two, even three runs without seeing it anywhere. So no go, I guess. Next, I decided to buy something more concrete. So I unlocked the Tinkerer class, and this didn't really feel much different. Um, I expected things to get a bit more cheesy, considering much of the Tinkerer skills are based around debuffing enemies. But even after using the minus 50% accuracy, I still got hit a lot. Perhaps one of the other two unlockable classes might have been the better choice. The only thing that does feel a bit cheesy is the ship's crafting system, uh, especially when it comes to weapon modification. If you go straight into building that module, you can upgrade your individual weapons with extra parts to boost damage and accuracy and even ammo count. This takes very minimal money and energy costs. Pair this with the early mission gathering and building an extra generator for increased energy gains, you can get the drop on many abandons early on. As when I opened the video, I did really enjoy this game. You can tell that this is a labor of love from the developer and its attempt to provide an XCOM experience with a more concrete plot that you have direct control over during each playthrough. With that said, I think there's many reasons why not too many people have talked about this game. It's low budget design, repetitive audio, a complete lack of gameplay support. Many gamers are likely to pass over this despite its very light price tag. It's definitely not a game for newcomers as well. Even some veterans are likely going to find this very unappealing. However, if you are really into XCOM and you're up for the challenge, you may find this charming in its own way. If you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. We had a lot to unload here, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Every little bit helps the channel. Cheers for now, and if you're up against the wall, just switch strats. See ya.